There are also some variations that you might come across in dialect. For example, in most of Spain, they use le and les whenever they're referring to him or her or you formal or you guys or them. So instead of lo and la and los and las, they're using le and les, not just to make to him, to her. They will use it always when they're referring to people and not things. So in most of Spain, le veo means I see him, her, or you formal. And lo veo means I see it. But in the great majority of the Spanish-speaking world, this isn't the case. In most of Spain, you have vosotros, which is the you plural informal, which is only used in Spain or most of Spain. But again, nowhere in Latin America. So that might be something you want to listen out for if you will practice this dialect of Spanish. Many accents have an aspirated S in Spanish. So you might hear esta instead of esta, como esta instead of como esta, espero instead of espero. Around the Rio de la Plata, for example, around Montevideo and uh, Buenos Aires, and in 30% of the Spanish-speaking world used exclusively or mixed with tú, you also have vos, vos, another word for tú. And the verb conjugations might change slightly. So instead of puedes, you might hear podes. And because the accent's coming on the end, that O isn't splitting. Podes. Instead of quieres, querés. So you might come across small differences in different dialects of Spanish, but they are minor, and you now have all of the know-how and experience to identify and understand them. And if you want, adopt them. You can adopt these differences. It's advisable to speak like the people you are practicing with, because the more you speak like the Spanish that you are hearing, the more you understand. Now, if you're talking with people from different Spanish-speaking countries, people with different dialects or accents in Spanish, then you might get something like a pan-Hispanic accent, let's say, like many native Spanish speakers who move around the Spanish-speaking world or spend time with Spanish speakers from different countries also have. You might even find yourself switching between different accents when you're talking with people from different places. Again, a phenomenon that we also find occurring amongst native speakers. Ahora hablamos español. Ahora somos hispanohablantes. Now we speak Spanish. Now we are Spanish speakers. Somos hispanohablantes. Y solo tenemos que practicar, hablar y analizar para perfeccionar nuestro español. My advice now for the end of the course is to spend some time practicing, to get out and practice and expose yourself to Spanish as much as possible. And then maybe after a short while of practicing, you might want to repeat the course to refresh and touch up on anything that you might be unsure of, especially having practiced and being solid on so many things. It will really free up a lot of mental space to home in on the things that you are more uncertain with. And in this way, repeating the course might be a little bit like when you watch a good movie twice and on the second time round you have a different experience. The most important thing in this journey of exploring and improving your Spanish is to not to forget to enjoy it, to not obsess with the destination, but to enjoy the journey. You are already a Spanish speaker, you should enjoy it. There is a huge variety of literature, music and cinema coming from Spanish-speaking countries, so you can enjoy this and at the same time effectively be studying. But it won't feel like that. And we must bear in mind also that listening is a separate skill. You will hear many things that you could think your way through and say and maybe not understand them. So when you first begin listening, don't be overwhelmed by the fact that you don't understand at the beginning as much as you can speak. All you have to do is insist on analyzing the language that you're exposed to, breaking it up and seeing what you can learn from that. And although at the beginning it will seem very fast, once you get in the habit of this analysis and this breaking up of the language in the same way that we were doing when we were building up to create our sentences, 
in reverse, deconstructing what you hear. The more you do this, the more Spanish will slow down. It would slow right down and you will hear a lot more. So, like I said, don't be overwhelmed by not understanding a lot at the beginning. Insist, enjoy music, watch movies with subtitles, try to match between the subtitles in English and what you are hearing in Spanish and just try to match bits and pieces. If you insist with this very quickly, you will notice that you are understanding a lot more and that the language appears to slow right down. Thank you very much for participating in the language transfer project just by doing the course. Please share it. Language transfer is a completely independent and unfunded project. So we don't have any funds for the diffusion of this course. If this course got to you, it's because somebody shared it. So please do keep sharing and telling people about this way of learning so that they also might enjoy this experience for free. All of our courses are completely free to promote language learning and to allow anybody to have this experience anywhere in the world. But of course, the fact that the courses are free doesn't mean that we are immune to the world of monetary economics. We produce courses much slower than what we would like to due to a lack of funds. So when you donate, actually what you're donating is time that we are then able to spend on the construction, practice and recording of new courses. If you would like more information on the language transfer project, what we're doing and why, then check out our website www.languagetransfer.org. We really hope you enjoy using your new language and the new world that it opens up to you. Strangely, the same one that was there all along. Yeah.